ladies and gentlemen now in today's video we're going to be breaking down the brand new demonic beast croc shell boss fight and this is one of the most annoying fights that they've ever made and my biggest piece of advice on this is it's really not worth for the majority of players actually doing extreme or hard on this one because if we have a look at the reward difference between normal and extreme so normal if you get a gold box it's 54 even if you get the bronze it's 48 uh, but when it comes to the extreme stuff if you get the gold it's 78 and the bronze is 72 and extreme in comparison is probably about five to ten times harder and also very niche and difficult to do unless you have a um uh, Keo or also a high alt mon speed. Uh, so yeah, extreme is just like really, really annoying because what you need to do on this boss is you need to stack up ignites. On the normal difficulty, it's five. On the hard difficulty, it's seven. And on the extreme difficulty, it's nine ignites. And then once you stack up the ignites, then you transition him into his second phase. Um, but yeah, it's very easy to get five. It's a little bit tricky to get seven. And it's just really annoying unless you have Keo or like a high alt on speed to get nine so i'd recommend again like you're fine to do this on normal because all you need are like the croc shell claws and you also need the challenge clears as well so there's no like penalty for doing it on um uh, normal in comparison to higher versions and if you do it on normal then you can bring in like green Escanor, kane and also red demon melee all very common characters there as like your first team but you also need to load up a second team as well and this is just like a high damage output character because he starts off as a blue character but then transitions into a green character um so yeah we're going to jump into this fight on normal i'll show you how it kind of goes down uh but you want your first team to be the ignite team and we are using attack food here as well the ignite team it doesn't really matter what their damage is in all fairness man so you can put health sets on everybody if you're struggling with um uh survivability uh but just make sure you got a good uh good damage set up here so this is the uh the crocodile man beast thingy he lets out a giant roar at the start but you want to get him into his uh, turtle phase because the first thing you're going to notice in this fight is that any damage you try to deal is only going to deal one damage until you uh, apply five ignites and get that transition there um so what we're going to do here is we're going to chuck off uh, this card this card and uh, i think also this card for now so we're going to triple ignite turn one and then next turn we can double ignite and you also have and my face is uh, in the way here uh, just to show you in the uh, the corner actually as soon as the next turn starts there will be a, a team transition button and at any point um uh, in this fight you can uh, swap out your team and swap out your hand as well so this a button allows you to see your like other hand here so we can see like the uh, the the rank up the sariel cards and at any point we can just press this button as well to kind of switch in and switch out the team so it's like very easy to switch between teams but again you don't want to do that your first two turns because only the first two turns you can apply ignites because uh, he goes uh, what is it a debuff blocks uh, on his second go um, so yeah we want to make sure we go for ignites here and then ideally if you can rush an ult in this scenario we can't get an ultimate here uh, so what we're gonna do i'll just put the camera back for a sec is uh let's actually just slap on uh, i think all the ignites we can here so yeah let's go for that let's chuck off this um and he won't actually flip until his um into his uh what is it shell phase uh until the end of his turn so even once you apply the five ignites again it's not an instant transition he needs to have his goes and then he's going to um uh, flip so yeah i think here um what are we going to go for so yeah he, he goes for the transition again he'll swap from a um a blue character to a green so at this point i think we're just gonna like switch in the other team here he does have ulti uh which is uh, a little bit annoying but we should be able to survive it with arthur's damage reduction here on normal difficulty uh so yeah there's not too much to worry about here and i think i'm actually sorry or cleave might be enough to get him down here on normal difficulty <laughs> we'll try it out man we'll go for a sorry or cleave and arthur single target here and see if it's enough damage if not we should be fine to survive here Again, depending on, like, your gear and power level, uh, you can go for something a bit more offensive or something a little bit more defensive. But, uh, yeah, that was, like, plenty of damage to get the job done there. And then we got, like, a couple of Sariel cards just to uh, finish off the job here. I think our game has crashed on blue stacks, unfortunately. All right, so the fight is recovered. We actually drew a slightly different hand here, uh, which is, I think, a little bit worse, but it's still going to work out fine, I reckon. 
So, uh, I think you should be able to get him down. Yeah, sorry, I'll just cheat code him, man. Look at that. That's fantastic. Uh, and again, if you want, like, the guaranteed KO in that first phase, I think uh, using those cards in an inverse order of going for the, um, uh, what is it, single target there, just to make sure you got enough damage, uh, should be a pretty good strategy. But again, if you use this setup, man, like, it's really straightforward. There are, like, a few other characters like Gila as well that do apply Ignites. Um, I tried to not use Keo for the initial strategy because I know a lot of people don't have access to Keo because uh, the King of Fighters collab was like almost a year ago and there's been like no additional way to get him. Uh, so yeah, very easy team for normal there. Apparently on both uh, normal and hard as well, if you do wait for um, uh, five turns, and I think this is something we'll like quickly test out as well. Um, you actually do have the ability uh, for him to just like naturally transform even if you don't bring in ignite characters uh, So yeah, we'll test that out as well for you guys But again, you can see like you can do it in like three four turns if you do bring in it an ignite team So you might as well like bring in like Escanor, Red Demon Melee uh, like these two probably have ignites uh, between them But Kane's like really good because like both of his cards ignite so like he's he's good to bring in but again we're going to test out like the waiting uh, a little bit longer strategy here so i think we're just going to flip the team and let me start like building up uh sariel cards here <laughs> i think for a bit of fun so i think we wait like five turns this is a strategy that some people are using i actually don't know if this has actually been applied to the uh, the global version but this was a nerf that was um uh, applied after a few days on the kr version because there are a lot of complaints about uh, the difficulty of this boss but uh, apparently, I think it's four or five turns. So let's uh, scope this out and see how it is. But again, when it comes to normal as well, there's just not um, as much damage to worry about, which is really good. But look at this handful of Sariel cards, dude. This is uh, turned out quite nice, man. We go for this. So yeah, you just have like plenty of time. Um, I think if this works, how I think it's gonna work. But there is a, a debuff to save all. So again, don't use uh, main damage dealer that relies like heavily on uh, debuff specifically. It's not what you uh, want to happen in this fight. Oh no! Okay, the game's crashed. Right, we'll load it back up again. Alright, so we're back. I just had to redo that play. I just decided to like, uh, what is it? Get Sariel's ult, just so we can dump this Gotha card and draw uh, next turn. But I thought it, it didn't really matter anyway. Um, right, let's go for this. And I think I'm just going to pass pass. And then... Yeah, there we go. We can see, like, the shield's fading. So I think it's, like, one more turn. Cool, cool. So let's just, uh... Yeah, pass, pass. And then we should be able to... What was it? One shot toward the end of this. Oh, no, Sariel has been stunned. That's really unfortunate. <laughs> so, yeah, we've actually got to wait another turn here, man. Oh, that's slightly annoying. It makes sense, though, with the, uh... Uh, advantage attributes there so yeah there's like nothing we can do but we can like actually uh oh like you cannot change uh teams if one of your heroes is stunned oh that's really annoying man okay here's what it is doesn't matter too much again here we're chilling we're not really in much threat here main damage he's dealing on normal difficulty is uh via the ultimate move so again, this isn't like the optimal way to do it, but just to show you like a way that you can do it. But yeah, if we just go for Sariel's ult here, should be a massive chunk of damage. Nice. And then, you know, moving into the um uh, the next portion of it, uh, we do have, uh, yeah, just triple uh, <laughs> triple gold card play. So again, this is uh, a way that you can farm the, uh, the normal difficulty if you want. I don't know, you could probably like leave it on auto with this team and it would probably get it done in all fairness, man. Yeah, that might be a way to uh, just kind of roll through the um, uh, the normal difficulty if you're looking to like do it in the background, for example. Because yeah, we were in no threat of dying there at all. But if you do want to do extreme, again, ideally you do need like a high alt level mon speed because uh, he applies lots of ignites there or Keo. So I'm just going to quickly change around the team for... Um, 
what is it? The uh, the extreme difficulty. So we're gonna replace, uh, I think, Kane with Keo here. Just because, yeah, a lot of people don't have Kane like at a really high level, and I think Extreme he gets a fair bit harder. So let's bring in Keo here. I think we should be good to go. So let's uh, use a stamina pot here, and hopefully the fight doesn't crash. Again, I feel like a lot of the new bosses and content that comes out just isn't like optimized for blue stacks, and it often crashes it, which is like crazy, crazy annoying. But yeah, let's skip the intro here. And again, the crazy thing about Keo, uh, which just makes it a lot more practical to get the uh, all the ignites you need, is just that he's applying like two every single turn. So you only really need like three ignites on top of that, which is pretty uh, pretty easy to um, pump out. So yeah, I think we'll chuck this off and let's just, uh, I think, dump this as well for now. What a uh, fantastic surprise. The game just crashed again. But yeah, thinking about it, Kane is actually a little bit safer if you've got him uh, ranked up. Because then you're not relying on drawing another Ignite here. Because, um, yeah, we just need one more. But again, there's a very high likelihood of getting a, uh, a second Ignite either on Melee or Escanor. But again, if you're looking for a, um, a bit of a safer option, uh, Kane, just because he has double Ignite cards again, it's going to mean that next turn it's, uh, it's guaranteed. Which is uh, it's pretty damn cool. Um, and let's go for this. And I think just chuck this off on Melee for now. Okay, nice. So we gotta survive uh, another turn here, but we, we should be good, man. I think as well, he's gonna go for melee over Keo. So Keo, um, I think anyway, actually, does Melee have more health? Oh, actually, he does have more health. If he one banks Keo here, dude, this is not gonna be an epic game at the moment. Uh, actually, do you have enough Ignites to then switch team? I think we like to stay with this for now, in all fairness. So let's just get uh, Keo healed up. I think we can just about... Oh, yeah, we can't actually get him healed up because we... Um... What is it? We're only dealing one damage here. <laughs> but yeah, this is the, the annoying thing about Extreme is unless you uh, burn the shield down, it doesn't naturally dissipate. So he's uh, gone into Escanor, which is fantastic there. Okay, nice. And he should transform at the end of this turn. Wonderful. So that's uh, that's a pretty good time, man. Pretty good time. So I think we go for the team switch now. Oh, we can't change because, uh, yeah, Eskinol's stunned here. So let's chuck this off. And then I think we'll move this and go for the dump. Because then we can get uh, Melly's ult next turn. And we can probably use that to push phase and then switch to uh, Sariel. Or we can just switch to Sario uh, after team and finish this last bit off. I think might be a bit more effective. So we still got like all the additional damage here, so Arthur should be hitting a fair bit harder. So we swap the team, and again, this really isn't recommended that you uh, go extreme on this fight, at least in my opinion. So that's uh, upgrade Sario here. Use both of the Arthur cards. Should be enough to get this man down. Come on, Arthur. You got this, mate. Oh, no, it's not, dude. Just by a little bit as well. Okay, that really uh, was a small amount of damage there. So that was that was a good time. And I think if we go for... Oh, he's got the damage decrease here. So this is uh, minus 80% damage. Yeah, we should be fine to nuke through this regardless. I think, like, the Sariel card's going to be enough. Yeah, cool, cool. So that, that worked out well. As you can see, like, Keo, it's not like a super hard fight. It's just a bit more annoying on Extreme. But again, if you don't have Keo, which I think is the position the majority of players are in, then, yeah, it's just um, a lot more annoying. But Sariel should take care of business here. Nice. Yeah, a couple of cards, mate, straight in the bin. So overall, again, like for doing this difficulty, the rewards like they're not um <laughs> there's not a big a big big difference. So if you got Keo man, go for it. There's also like Mon Speed Alt Rush that you can do with like Mon Speed um uh Green Merlin and Kane where you just like move around Mon Speed cards, get his ult off. 
Uh, make sure you find a couple of, fire off a couple of cane cards as well before you get debuffed. Or just like bring in Keo and Monsby, and that can be a good tag team there. But you do need to have Monsby very importantly uh, at a fairly high alt level, because if you don't, then you're not going to get enough ignites. Because again, Monsby's uh, ignites are actually fully tied to his ultimate level, which I do understand. Again, where there's kind of this position where a lot of people don't have a 6 6 Monsby. So Monsby in comparison to Keo is like much more awkward. But if you've got to use Monsby for extreme, you're probably like just better off farming the um. Uh, the normal difficulty, at least in my opinion. Uh, but yeah, ladies and gentlemen, hopefully you enjoyed today's tips and tricks video and breakdown of the brand new Crocodile Man boss. And if you did, please do smash that like button. That'd be greatly appreciated. Uh, let me know in the comment section below kind of any strategies or teams that are working really well for you. Uh, but aside from that, if you did enjoy today's video, please do smash that like button. That'd be greatly appreciated. Thank you all very much for watching. Take care. And I hope that you have an absolutely fantastic day. You are not subscribed to the whale sin of spending? Who decided that? Subscribe now or enjoy the bitter taste of regret.